Thank you, Isha, for all the kind words. Um, welcome everyone who's here today. Uh, it's it's a pleasure to be invited to GNA, which essentially was a big part of when I started my journey. Um, I congratulate GNA for constantly being active and making sure they come up with more ventures to help as many people in in this field of neurology, uh, which I feel a lot of times people are afraid of. But uh, today my session is essentially is going to be not just about how do you match in neurology, how do you match as an applicant for the USMLE cycle? Because I feel most people do apply for internal medicine and neurology has a big, big part um, within internal medicine itself. So how I like to break things are make it simple for people to understand, not make it feel like they don't, they, they feel overwhelmed by it. And at the same time, they feel that, oh, this is something that can be done. And I need to know just the right things that I need to be prepared for, because those were things that I did not know. And I made myself a promise that once I am on the other side, I'm going to take our time and share those things with people. And in no way does that mean this is a hundred person, only one way right kind of a path. But I always believe that you need to know yourself and listen to things and do things according to what makes sense to you. And I'm strictly against anyone who tells, oh, this is the way that you do it. And this is the way that you don't do it. There's different ways you approach things. So today's session is going to be broken down into a couple things. I have a short presentation just to go over a few frequently asked questions. What my realization is most people are pre-step one. They're still applying. So I'm going to share how the journey looks. More importantly, I do take webinars regarding step one, step two, step three, interviews, personal statements, CVs. But those are those are times that will come ahead in your life. And feel free to reach out to me uh, should you have any concerns. Uh, I do try to um, post most things uh, on my channel, Instagram, as well as uh, come up, uh, share my time, especially with GNA. But let's start today's session. And following my presentation, we'll have about 20 minutes for, for questions and answers for queries that you have. Because I think that really helps you feel comfortable asking your own questions. Um, and I will try answer that, them to the best of my uh, abilities. So... Isha, you're going to help me and Nikita, you're going to help me uh, uh, coordinate when I'm looking at my presentation uh, because I might not be able to see as many of you. Um, so let's just share screen. Um, and feel free to keep uh, writing things in your chat box uh, because that way I'll know that I'm making some sense. Perfect. Um, Isha, is it visible? Uh, yes, doctor, it's visible. Perfect. And I love that. I love Zoom that I can still see you guys. So lovely. And I'm in, uh, a little in, into graphic designing and aesthetics. So I, I always feel that uh, your presentations need to captivate. So I've tried some things. I don't get a lot of time during residency, but uh, I do make some digital logos and art. So I hope you guys feel good about the presentation and at the end of it when we do some Q&A and we can all turn on our videos and get to uh, interact a little more. Perfect. So pursuing US Emily. Uh, so like, like I said, uh, and I think this is the right platform to uh, talk about our love for neurology. I believe that what when a lot of people ask me what made you fall in love with neurology and, and th that is what came to my head. We know an ocean about neurons and not even a drop about millions of them emerging together as brains. So, so neurology for me is infinite potential. And I think whatever reason you have to choose neurology, that's valid. And make sure when you go ahead in this beautiful stream, you motivate more people, you take away the, the fear of neuro from people. And I always like to think, uh, it's weird when doctors kind of come come across using a language that is so tricky and people feel like, oh, we don't get it. Or oh, what is uh, putamen and what is globus pallidus interna? Um, I think you know a subject only when you can break it down into simpler language for a common person to understand. So I think that's the goal. And neurology offers that challenge. Uh, if you're up for it, I think 
it's one of the most amazing challenges uh, and i usually like sharing this slide uh, because when you see someone who's at a place that you want to be and you see all these achievements you're like oh i am i'm just not good enough i am i am not going to reach there but behind all of this behind all these ranks there are failures that no one sees and those failures are very similar to every one that that every failure that you guys have had when the first time my research got selected the first time i uh won internationally or nationally for my research does not describe my journey it also includes the first rejection letter for my research it also includes the times i was like i don't know how to submit an abstract times that i don't know what to do about case presentations i did case presentations now i don't know about anything about retrospective studies so it happens to all of us same things same things happened with my step journeys i if you look at my scores yes sure people come across oh great scores but essentially it's not that i didn't have to study i didn't have to sit in those for for those one year uh, one and a half years we i had to but but what i'm trying to tell you is from just one college in one corner of our country like india i managed to make it here and if i can do it you can do it and i am not the most hard working guy out there i'm telling you i like to think of myself like i know i have a good brain sure but i don't want to just sit on there um, my channel is called medically mediocre and that's with an idea that if you think that you are just mediocre there are ways to get things right and that's what we are going to do today all right so uh, how i like to think about the brain is an internal cosmos with windows to the world a muscle that can move the world an organ of destiny and this is something that i used to draw uh, like it's been some time but just keep your artistic side alive like isha told me she's a poet and i'm going to definitely read about you very soon so a few things about us emily in general um the us emily what it is the decision i think that is the most overlooked step people are like do we even want to do us emily do we do, even want to do indian pg or plab no one tells much about it then there are the steps 1 2 and 3 then there is clinical experience that ideally you should have in the us cv building your personal statement interviews and q and a so all of these are basically steps that will make you match at the end of the day right um and i'll talk more about the initial things right now but all of these can essentially deserve their own 5 hour webinar because there's so much in there i just want you to know what steps are and you need to focus on every step at at what at at the right time because otherwise this process can get overwhelming but once you decide that you're going to pursue us emily uh, and again there is nothing wrong about pursuing indian pg or plab but they have their own pros and cons for me um us had to be the next step because for me neurology is big uh neurology is offered as its own residency so i save myself two years at least if i if i do us only but that was not the reason um uh, i am huge into academics and research and i think what us offered me is very different from what indian neurology offered me and sure some people would want to be hands on surgeons and indian pg would have offer you i think much more opportunity to work on people and that's fair enough i mean just ask yourself the right questions and then make a decision but once you choose us emily you have to know it takes time it takes a year year and a half i started my journey during internship i didn't start it during third year because i wanted to live my life i wanted to enjoy my studies during college and i was okay people were like why are you wasting time just get it done in during the your step your, your third year i was like this is me this is how i operate and i'm fine i want to give my steps knowing all the knowledge i have and i feel more comfortable if you are someone who wants to give it in your third year that's totally fine for me scores were huge i if i'm studying i want to score really well i want to tell myself that oh i i did it right and i think giving my step one in, in internship really helped me with that so don't just run behind people thinking that you're getting late it's okay if you're making that decision now it's fine just make sure it's the right decision sure it's never too late to even go to the us and come back to india or start us emily journey after your residency in india but either way i would think you should know what what you're really uh, searching for 
and my uh, screen is kind of uh, fidgeting, but it's okay. <laughs> okay. So these are a few questions that um, that were asked to me at an uh, at a session for FAQ. So I, I tried to compile them together because I think most people have the same questions, and sharing your answers really help because you realize that I'm not alone. People have the same questions. You are not alone struggling between should I pursue USMLE? When should I give my step? What is a good score? How should my interviews be? How should my CV and my PS look? Everyone has the same questions. So one thing that I realized was different in India was we usually study and we don't let anyone know. Is like, and we we want to hide in our corner and and like, oh, I'm not studying and it's fine. Because I get it. Sometimes the competition is too intense. But when it comes to USMLE, I like to think of it as a marathon. There will be times where you will really feel that um, I'm getting burnt out. And, and there's enough spots for everyone who deserves it. And what do I mean when I say I, you deserve it? If you worked hard enough, you're passionate about it, you can prove with your scores, with your interviews, with your PS, no one can take your spot. And I think it's a good opportunity to give back. Uh, I always try to tell myself that, okay, if I did not have anyone, should not be a reason that I will not be there for anyone. I will make that change. And I'm sure like if you are listening to me here, you when you match, you will be helping a lot more people with things that you learned along your way, right? So, uh, so I think, like I said, it's okay to start your journey during internship. You are not late. Even if you're after that, that's fine. All you need to know, know is to justify why you are late i don't want to see a gap gap year if you have a gap year then just prove it to me that you were doing something you were doing some residency you were working somewhere just make your story what it was right and i'm sure no one's going to be sitting around two years not doing anything and then suddenly feel that i want to do usmg right so just justify your story you're not out of the game just because you are you have a past year of graduation but i'm glad you guys are in your first second third fourth years which is a good time to begin uh, because you don't have to worry about that problem of gap years. These are a few things about step one, step two, step three that I usually post on my LinkedIn. Um, so I just posted some screenshots from there. Um, so one thing that a lot of people forget after step one being pass and fail is that the load has come on to step two. And that is what I have realized. Um, you have to realize initially it was the scores didn't matter that much, but the only objective parameter to choose you over an American graduate would be your step two scores. So everything else can be pushed aside, can be changed, can be done later, but your step two scores will essentially be the scores that you live with. So whatever your potential is, make sure you achieve it. I don't mean that if you score a 230, you 240, I don't want to demotivate you. It's a great score. But I don't want you to feel that I know I could score a 250, but I just scored a 230. I don't want you to live with that regret. So you want to give everything in your step two. Research, if you can balance right away, good enough. Amazing. If you can do other extracurriculars, good away. But all of that is going to open only if your step two score is good. So... They, these are a few misconceptions that a few people had and I usually uh, try answer those on, on my LinkedIn. Uh, feel free to take a picture, screenshot. I think you might not be at your step two, step three journey right now, but maybe at one time you, you might find it relevant and sure, I'll be there to help you and everyone that you can reach out should be able to help you. But the USMLE journey is something that at the end of the day, 90% is your own game. I can give you resources. I can tell you how I did it, but you have to find your own way. You have to find your own way. How do I still survive? How do I not burn myself out? How do I go out and enjoy so that I can come back and do another block of you world? That's fine. Um, one thing that I've not shared here is about step one. And I realize a lot of people ha over here are uh, preparing for step one. So what I'm going to do is I have one of my videos, uh, which is called 10 things USMLE step one that I posted on YouTube a couple of years ago. And it's a very crisp session. It tells you very basic things. How do you approach step studying for step one? And once you've made up your mind, USMLE is your thing. I think that's a good, good resource for you guys. Um, just type in over YouTube, 10 things USMLE step one and something like this should pop up. Uh, just remind me Isha and Nikita towards the end of the session. If we have time, I'll, I'll share the link as well. 
And then step three is something that I would definitely insist if you have the time, go ahead with it. But it's something uh, that step one and step two need to be given before your application season. Step three, something that you can even do after you get your residency. Um, but I will talk about that later because I was someone who gave his step three before application season and a lot of program directors were really impressed. Like, how did you manage to give your step three with a good score before applying? So I'm just keep planting these seeds in your head that if you can do it, it will definitely up your game, right? Okay. The other thing, how much time do you want for every step? Uh, I mean, everyone has its own timeline. Uh, I would say on average, four to six months for step one, five to eight months for step two, three to four months for step three. But that does not necessarily need to be everyone's case. If you have a heavy internship, you might get pushed to the other end, which is okay. I want you to still survive your internship, right? Uh, and then you'll see these brainiac pearls at the end of, of my posts, which are just ways for me to tell you that it's okay to be different. Don't force yourself to take a step if you don't feel confident. Your scores are the only objective criteria that help get more interviews and a low score sometimes get filtered out. Secondly, your mental health is extremely crucial to survive an eight to nine hour long USMLE step exam. However, don't unnecessarily delay an exam beyond required for it not only delays your process, but will mentally exhaust you. So there are a lot of nuances to it. No one ever will understand your state for someone who gives an eight to nine hour long exam. But trust me, it's the most proud feeling when you come out of that exam and you you tell yourself that I did it. And you know what? If you really enjoy your stream, if you really want to become a doctor, they are the most beautiful exams you will ever take. Just do justice to those steps when you're studying them. I've shared the resources that I use uh, over uh, my YouTube video. So feel free to go through them. This is the video that I was talking about. Uh, once you type it in, you, you, you'll you see uh, something like this. Uh, th this is something about your CV because this is the time you're doing things, right? For me, it was neurology. For you, it might be medicine. For someone, it might be dermatology. But my point being, your CV should tell everyone that you are passionate about that stream, Okay. People do send in almost empty CVs and they do match and that's okay. But I want you to match at the best possible place that you can. There's a purpose for the CV. If I got 20 interviews, 19 of them asked me about how have you done these things and how have you done this magazine and stuff. And that makes a difference. I want you to improve your chances. So don't th take things lightly. Don't think, oh, it's okay to not put things in my CV. If you've done things, put it in there. If I did a newsletter, I made sure it is neurology. If I did a national international quiz, I made it like I designed my own logos. I gave them names and I made it sound it is neurology. Not just because... I want people to think I'm passionate about neurology, but because these things can only happen if you are passionate about neurology. You, No one can copy each other's passion, right? So the point is, if you've done it, you want to tell everyone that you've done it. The good thing about medicine is that almost everything can be related to medicine. So that gets easier there. The other question that gets asked about how important is research? Uh, it is. But I also think it, there's a lot of misconception when people don't focus on other things and they're like, research is going to make or break my application. It's not just research. Any one thing will never make or break your application. I'm going to want a whole person with a holistic personality. Why I want good research is not necessarily because everyone's going to get into research in a program. Ultimately, you're going to get become doctors first. Sure, I like research. I would like to go into research. I love academics. I want to go into academics. But I want you to sh showcase me that you have a couple publications because you know what that tells me? That you can understand research. You can read research because that's important in the States. That if there's new guidelines, then you follow those. You're not just doing the same thing again and again. For example, for heart failure patients, we do something called GDMT over here. Every patient gets that. Goal-directed medical therapy. All of that is based on recent research and it keeps changing. I don't want to, you to necessarily do research as a doctor, but I want you to understand when research comes your way and you can understand it. You can understand what standard deviations are. You can understand when someone is trying to make a fool out of you. 
right? So that's why I want some research in your uh, application. Yes, when you're applying to more competitive programs, the more research you have, the better it is. But one a suggestion that I have is focus your research works in the direction of things that you want to do. Like my research works were on circadian rhythm disorders, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. I tried to accommodate COVID with psychiatric impacts on healthcare workers. So that way I'm, my, I'm doing two things with one, one objective, right? Uh, my, I'm doing research, but at the same time, I'm also demonstrating my passion for neurology. So be smart in your process. Uh, student organizations like GNA, AMSA, all of them play an important role uh, as volunteer organizations. Uh, again, what is volunteership? Anything that you do without getting paid for is volunteership. So make sure you mention those things. Those things are huge in the States. Uh, a lot of people tell me they don't have contacts in the US. Will they match? Most people don't. I don't. I have friends here i have relatives here but trust me most people cannot help you because the place that you really want to match in the process is so so difficult already not most people can help you the only person that can really help you is is yourself having said that contacts is different from networking go to places talk to people be part of organizations because that is an opportunity for you to show that i am passionate i want to match right so Getting in touch with attendings and residents during your electives, impressing them with your ethic and knowledge can leave an impact for them to not just give you interviews, write better LORs. And essentially, all of it is just being yourself. Just don't take things lightly. Like, I'm just going to go there and get my LOR. And you want to be a person who's connected and kind, not alone and unhelpful. USMLE isn't a competition. It's in a conventional way. It's a marathon. It's better you stay together, ask for help, and offer help. It's teamwork, right? I am essentially not getting anything being here. You guys are learning, but that's not how I think. I am learning as much. I am learning how do I see different people? How do different people react? How many people turn on their videos? How do I get them to turn on their videos? How do I interact with them? What questions they have for me? So it's, it's not a one-way street. It's always a two-way street. Your perspective has to be something that learns at every stage. The day I feel I know everything, I am dead. Obviously, US Emily step one, two, three are never, never gonna come back in my life. But then why am I taking these sessions? Because if I find a way to give back is also a time where I'm gonna be learning things for what I'm gonna do in the future, right? And then those things matter. Yes, if someone's not talking about step one, step two, step three, after their residency, nothing's gonna bite them in the back. But you have to create your opportunities, right? Uh, these are a few tips about personal statements. Uh, you can find this on my Instagram uh, on uh, medically mediocre. I think you guys are too soon in the process, so I won't talk about it. But I usually do take some sessions when when your season is is there. I hope I'll be a little free to help more people, and hopefully I can uh, approach uh, GNA and get some time and help you guys a little more. But Feel free to take screenshots at any time, but I have all of this on my Instagram. If you if you forget taking any screenshots, um, so uh, these are a few things about how does the match work? Okay, one thing that's super important that I need to talk about: the match, the interviews, getting the interviews is one thing, and then getting selected by the interviews to match you to rank you is another thing. And when the interview happens, whose interview is it? It's not your interview alone. They are interviewing you if they like you and you are interviewing them that if you like the program because you are going to rank them as well. And that makes you realize that you have power. You cannot be scared. You cannot be like, oh, please take me. If you trust yourself, I was, once I initially was like, yes, I want as many interviews as I can get. But at the end of the day, I'm going to go at one place. And I realized, oh, I like these 19 places that I got interviews from, but I need to make my decision. I need, I don't want to go to these 10 places. I don't need, want to go to this city. I want to go to this program, which offers me this visa, which is in this city, because for me, the city matters. I want to be in an academic program. I want to be in a university program. I want to be in a program that's renowned. Whatever my filters are, I have to choose as well. So you have to know that this algorithm, the NRP, NRMP match algorithm, it's actually a Nobel prize winning algorithm. So there's a lot of work that's gone into there. It's, it's, 
once you come closer to your match dates and you will you will realize how things are intricate but just know it's not just you who's on the spotlight the programs also want good candidates right and someone told me if you are a good candidate good universities are not good because they have a lot of money they are good because the right students the right residents give them that their name and fame if i do something here at my university in emery it's also making an impact on the world about emery right that there are residents from emery who do great stuff if i write poetry if i am presenting some medical poetry somewhere yes i'm doing such stuff for myself but i am also making a great university like it's going to go in the name of emery right so just have that confidence with you everyone is unique you need to see the positives in your journey and sell your achievements humbly interviews are your only shot at telling the program things about you they can't know otherwise so don't be underconfident that oh i have done this but i don't want to talk about it be humble about things but tell things it's only 20 minutes that you have to represent yourself to someone who's never seen you right um this is something about you pan some people who who had questions about getting an ivy league unit uh interviews or getting master oh i mean again too too far fetched right now but my point being there are universities which offer like 2% img rates 1% img rates and we feel scared like we don't even apply if you're confident in yourself i applied and i got one of my best interviews was at upan so i'm just trying to share this to tell you that emery and upan don't take imgs as much but they took me and if they took me they will take you and you have all the time just prove yourself that oh i am i'm worth worth it right and they will go the extra mile to see you i was told that they went through my youtube channel the whole thing and then they they all everything that you you do makes an impact just be confident about it right this is about how neurology residency works it's basically 4 years uh, 1 3 i'm currently doing my internal medicine year uh, but if people have questions about that please feel free to reach out this these are parts from when i used to like i'm currently volunteering to teach to emery students these uh and i realized that uh, academics across the world is the same people value good teachers uh if you're into teaching please push yourself i take out time from work to teach them and i realized that that teaches me so much how to teach better right these are a few neurology riddles that i i wrote in my brainstorm magazine if someone's interested in neurology please feel free to reach out i will keep sharing them um so so these are basically diseases that that you need to identify and there are like 10 hints in there pointing towards a disease you can take a screenshot you you want to uh, try this at the end of the day feel free have fun <laughs> and uh, these are answers if you need them later this was a quiz that that i made on neurology so i try connect neurology to every other subject so i make my own questions and every question has a way not to just tell you teach you something about neurology but also how to go about answering questions that you think you don't know answers to so um, so neurohistology neurochemistry neuroophthalmology neuromicro neuroimaging um one thing that i want everyone to remember is that we are all born geniuses it's just about the just journey to discover our unique skills and line them with our passions um i think if you believe that life is going to be much more kinder to you don't need you don't need to be too hard on yourself right it's not easy but it's never going to be easy you never want it to be easy if you were going to choose easy you weren't going to become a doctor right all you need to do is make sure you find your higher purpose and yes steps are difficult med school are di is difficult i'm telling you already not that life is going to be easy residency is difficult but it's what's what is going to satisfy you there's nothing else if you're here you better do it right right and and find times find people who make you feel good about it if today listening to me is making you feel good about life is making you feel good about your your decision there are you you will become that to someone right uh you don't need to uh, question yourself and i would genuinely genuinely urge a lot of people if you get time and it's not forcing anyone to necessarily take your time please make sure make sure whatever you know help your juniors help your colleagues 
I think uh, we need to change that culture of keeping our knowledge with ourselves, right? It's a cycle. Please feel for feel free to follow my Instagram if you have any more questions about USMLE. Uh, if you want to follow me personally, I sometimes miss the request. You can send me a DM and as soon as I get time, I will definitely accept it. Uh, just let me know that you attended my session. That way I'm not accepting stranger requests. And uh, <laughs> 10 things USMLE, like I said. Uh, and that's my YouTube. Uh, but I'm sure like GNA offers great resources. I'm still going to uh, go and follow up on the sessions that I missed uh, by GNA. And I think that's about the the slide um what i'm gonna do is stop sharing so that i can be back with you guys um and yes i think we have about 10 minutes to to have a question and answer session um if hopefully you guys have put any questions in the chat box i'll address them isha can help me with that Nikita can help me with that, but uh, I would prefer if you guys have any questions, it's better. You can ask me one on one that way it's more interactive. Um, any questions by anyone or if there's any feedback that you want to tell if there are no questions, if I did such a great job of answering everything, I can accept that. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for such an amazing session, Doctor. When you were saying all of those things about being an AMSA volunteer, about research, about every, about starting from scratch, about us having every, well, you basically conveyed every single doubt that we had. So, like, thank you for such a great session. I couldn't take my eyes off you during the whole session. I am so so glad you you're too kind. Oh, uh, I am. Uh... I just feel a little sad that I I had to run through it because of shortage of time. But my point was just to get you guys have an overall picture of how this journey is. Uh, and I'm more than happy to keep helping. Uh, please make sure the resources that are already there, uh, you go through them. But I usually try push myself, take sessions to help people with interviews and stuff. Uh, but just make sure you know you are in it for the right reasons. And once you've made that decision, you will have hard days. You will definitely have hard days. I have gotten frustrated. Like my step journey is not ending. Why is it not ending? I was like, okay, take a freaking break today. It's fine. It's my sister's wedding. It's okay. Let's take a break for another week. It's fine. But at the same time, you have to push yourself. There's no mom or dad who's going to come out behind you. Like, why aren't you studying? Book your date. No, no one knows your journey better than you right keep in touch with what's going on uh you have to become an adult super soon right but if you just have the energy and have the uh, perspective to keep yourself in the race i think it's great that you become a beautiful adult and a beautiful doctor at the same time with usmle so uh, I'm glad i could help uh, i had a question doctor <laughs> mm -hmm. hello uh, basically, uh, if I wanted to get if I wanted to get matched into neurosurgery in the USA, what uh, extra steps would I need to do to reach that level? So specifically for neurosurgery or other super competitive branches, uh, because it there there are first logistically less seats, uh, right? So most candidates applying are already doing research in that direction, right? So for sure. Uh, you will need research uh, and that does not mean just research in USA. I think everything that you're doing right now uh, is going to add value to it. Yes, you might need research in the US. That is not a black and white rule. Uh, if like for me, I didn't have a lot of research, but I had a lot of things like I have, I do, I and I cannot suggest like my personal statement literally had a poem that I wrote on autism. I cannot suggest people to do that, right? Uh, because not everyone is a poet and not every for it does not make sense for everyone. But my point of telling you that is everyone works differently. And I know literally the reason they took me was, oh, this guy is unique. We've not seen someone like him. So you want to be in that area, but at the same time, also do conventional things the right way. You don't want you, you want to do decent amount of research like, oh, yes, I have everything that a regular candidate has, but I also have these extra things. Right. And so 
definitely as much experience as you can have but one good thing about new, one one tip that i can give you because sometimes it might get difficult to match into specific branches so you can match into surgery and while you are doing your prelim surgery years you can still keep building contacts right because it's much easier to make contacts when you are in the states and then reach out to more programs who can directly take you from your surgery prelim year to an advanced neurosurgery program so that is a real possibility because i know it's it gets difficult to make contacts from your home country but for for fields that are prelim and advanced you can always contact a uh, network with people and then networking is based on things that you know and you are capable of right they're not based on like oh you are my uncle or you are my uh, relative right no one's going to take you on those things but i i get your point i think that's a good tip but i am sure you're already in your uh beginning of med school and you're doing great just just keep that passion alive keep documenting taking care of everything that you're doing so that when there's time to build your cv you have everything ready with you also one of our participants has a question how do mm -hmm. i study my basic subjects to understand and connect everything also does it matter to reach high level post in student organizations like amsa or msai etc to have a better cv or being a general member of it can also have an impact okay lovely so i'll answer both the questions first uh, how do i study my basic subjects i think the biggest tip on that is while you're in your med school enjoy studying your subjects if you're in your first year do anatomy biochem physiology as amazingly as you can if you're in your second year do those subjects if you're in your, in your final year i would really recommend don't focus on steps it's okay focus on medicine surgery obs gynae that's what made me fall in love with medicine steps are designed to give an exam they are not designed to give you everything every knowledge in the world because once you're studying for steps you will not be able to go back and read comprehensively all of anatomy the anatomy that i understand today is not only because of steps the steps helped me furnish it but my base came during my first year i used to watch dr najib's videos and and i had no expectation somehow i scored a distinction in anatomy and i was struggling with it struggling literally this is just to tell you that i remember days i was like mom i i don't know how people are studying anatomy it's so difficult and now in today's date because i understand the subject so well it's one it is one of my favorite subjects because i know what to tell about to it to people and i think that's a big reason i fell in love with neurology because neuroanatomy is so complex so i take out sessions just to teach people neuroanat so you want to do those subjects in the years that you are doing them and then use limited resources but the resources that work for you like i used to love boards and beyond during my step preparation and you will find all of these things in my videos but the second thing that's important is joining organizations sure but my understanding is certificates no one's going to ask you for them being at high positions if you've not done stuff no one cares i've been president i've been the president vice president head editor i have held 20 positions in in a lot of different places but i don't talk about all of them i talk about the thing that i am most proud of i talk about the thing that i worked most about and i talk about because in my interview they were like tell me the two things that you are most proud of so i talked about amsa because i have done so much there i've worked with literally 5000 students i've done 200 plus events i have grown myself as a person so much and no one asks for certificates i know i love i i have 500 plus certificates but no one's going to ask for proof the proof is if i'm able to talk about them that's the only proof so even if you're a member and you've done great stuff you can talk about that's enough if you are at a high position yes you get more opportunities to do stuff but don't be at a high position just to be there and not do stuff when i was in amsa i was like i want to make houses for 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 all the students i designed logos i i made a national house championship annual competition i did so many debates i did i i coordinated with all my state heads i made a lot of positions and i got help from a lot of people i literally made friends from states all across the country that helped me build my communication skills know how to work with different people so you see all of those things are don't have certificates necessarily yes they do but because i am the vice president it will have it will have my own signatures so it won't matter having the certificate what what matters is me be, being able to talk about it right and when you see me talking no one will 
question me did i do those things or not but if i tell you i was a member you'll be like anyone can become a member if you can talk about something that's when you you can do do things right so uh, i think i i hope that answers your question uh, well enough and uh, thank you uh, so much everyone thank you anna uh, anna i i hope i'm saying your name name correct uh, thank you everyone for joining um, a couple things before leaving that i i always love to do is keep record of whoever joined just to push myself um, it would be great if any or most of you can turn on your videos we would love to have a little photo with everyone and i'm sure isha and nikita will receive the feedback forms and they will they will share with me so i would love to hear from you guys but feel free anyone including isha and nikita uh, to ask any questions at any time sometimes it may take some time for me to get back but i am always always happy happy to help you guys and uh, any feedback any instant things that you want to tell or um ask see i think it was a good session because a lot of people turned on their videos <laughs> okay um uh, everyone ready with their good smiles okay okay now everyone the celebrity and now uh, one lovely thank you so much uh, that's all that i had for you guys thank you isha thank you nikita and thank you gna for for inviting me over happy to take out more time and uh, please feel free to reach out if i can be of more help if people are interested in neuroanatomy i would love to brush up my my knowledge and be able to contribute but uh, congratulations on such a great summit such a great uh, conference thank you dr singh for such an insightful webinar i'm sure we all learned a lot i mean i am not even sure whether i blinked my eyes because it was such an amazing webinar and i couldn't take my eyes off you dr avi singh dr singh is a pgy1 neurology resident at emory U university usa carrying a stethoscope in one hand and a pen in another dr avi is a passionate poet and artist with a soul that feeds on travel born in the holy city of the golden temple in amritsar he has traveled across to 19 countries He writes in three languages English Hindi Urdu and Punjabi across various themes ranging from social media issues like autism and drugs to the most human emotions like love having served as the vice president of AMSA leading a team of 200 plus states and college heads he loves to work with diverse team and organizing events with real impact he is also the chief editor of brainstorm a national neurology newsletter which essentially is his love letter dedicated to this beautiful subject we are grateful to have him as a mentor at gna speaking at multiple webinars and providing guidance to neurologists of tomorrow thank you doctor for taking your time out of your busy schedule for today's lesson